Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and today we're going to talk about traumatic perforation of the eardrum. If you haven't seen my video about the tympanic membrane or in general the ear yet, you can go and click on the banner above and see those videos first. So the traumatic perforation of the eardrum is, as the name indicates, a perforation or the creation of a hole in the eardrum caused by a trauma. This trauma can be of different origin, like for example by insertion of an object into the ear canal, which can be either purposefully in the form of for example a q-tip or accidentally. Also, the perforation can be caused by a concussion, which can be caused by an explosion or a slap across the ear. Also a head trauma, a bar trauma, so a sudden negative pressure or acoustic trauma can be the cause for this injury. There are different types of perforation. There's the one at the margin of the eardrum, so close to the annulus fibrosum, or a central eardrum perforation, um, which is in the large white pier part, or and the attic eardrum perforation, which is in the superior part of the eardrum. Um, also, it can be divided in a small perforation and a large perforation. Symptoms for this injury are the sudden loss of ability of hearing, also vertigo, discomfort, pain and itching in the ear, otorrhea, which is a secretion which flows out of the ear, and also a tinnitus, so a audible sound which um, does not change or go away. There can be different complications by, for example, the entry of bacteria into this hole and um, with that the entry into the middle ear. So it can cause chronic and also recurrent infections. It can lead to hearing loss, otitis media, which is the inflammation of the middle ear, cholesteatoma, which I described in a previous video, which is the creation of a kind of cell clump, which grows from the middle ear into the outer ear, so into the ear canal, then also um, a luxation of the ossicles is possible by the trauma, which causes the ossicles to move over each other or fraction, and also labyrinthitis, which I will explain in the next video as possible. Diagnosis is done by otoscopy, and by that we can visualize the perforation, and also the examination of Weber and Rinne is possible, and in this type of audiogram, there can be a conduction hearing loss seen. The treatment depends on the kind of perforation that is given in a specific patient. If the foreign body is still in the ear, then a doctor can remove this foreign body and can cover the ear um, with a sterile bandage. A tympanoplastic might be necessary if the defect does not heal by itself. This is a surgical correction and also osseculoplasty might be necessary. Antibiotics can be given in case of contact with a foreign body, water or any other possibly contaminated substance. And small ruptures should generally heal by themselves within days to weeks. However, it's important for a patient to keep the air clean and dry. So swimming, especially in lakes, is absolutely forbidden for patients in that time and also analges analgesics can be given for otalgia. I hope this video was clear and that you learned something. If you have questions, post it in the comments. I will try to answer as soon as possible and I would be very happy if you could subscribe. Thank you very much.